You're looking at a bald eagle and eaglets in a nest in Decorah, Iowa. It's a rare sight. Well, it was a rare sight until Decorah's Raptor Resource Project placed a camera with a live feed in the nest, and then social media took over. As of May 1st, more than 70 million people have seen these birds. What you're looking at is what social media is all about. Groups of people gather in online communities and share information, messages, music, images, and videos like this one. Stay tuned for more on The Heart of the Matter. Millions of people around the world are on Facebook. YouTube videos can make your family an instant hit. Has privacy gone to the dogs? On today's program, we visit with Jay First and Alan DeCarroll to get expert advice on how to successfully use this new medium for personal or business use. Later in the program, Special Agent Jonathan Lohman helps us understand the tools that are making engagement with the social media world a seamless part of daily life. But first, let's get this report from Donnie Rolls. Associate Professor Mark Johns teaches communication studies at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa. He's very familiar with the bald eagle video. It's from Decorah. It's the type of thing that social media spreads very well and very quickly. Johns began to talk to his students about social media in 2005. Social media sites that exist out there, such as MySpace or Orkut or uh, some of the others, uh, Friendster, have gone downhill. Uh, some others have tried to break in. Certainly Twitter qualifies as, as social media. Twitter users can share their thoughts 140 characters at a time. LinkedIn is a social media site designed to help people network and find jobs. MySpace is a popular place for people to connect and share music. In 2007, it was the most popular social media site, but not anymore. There are other players out there, but Facebook is sort of the 900-pound gorilla in, in the field right now. Most social media sites connect users in specific niches, but Facebook seems designed to connect virtually everyone. There are well over 500 million people on Facebook worldwide. It's the portal that many people are using now as their entree to the Internet. Instead of going to an email site, or to a news site to find out what's going on in the world. Uh, many people go to something like Facebook to see what their friends are highlighting about what's important in the world. Oh, it's only six? Oh, it's only six. Jenny Yakel and Jonathan Koch are juniors at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa. I've used Facebook. Yes, I use Facebook. I think it's important mostly because it's so popular, uh, which may be kind of a circular argument. It's, it's popular because it's popular, but... Social media is popular because it's fun. And it's fun because people share things, ideas, pictures, songs. Inger Michelson, why do I like her? It's peppy and it's cutesy and it's very girly. I like kind of messing around, posting things on uh, people's walls that are funny. And videos. Yeah, see, I would post something that I think is cute. Like these twin bunnies in this, in paper cups. Fairly simple. Videos like these are shared by millions on Facebook with a link to YouTube. YouTube plays a major role in the social media experience, but social media, including Facebook, is changing. When Facebook began, it was originally designed only for college students. Now it's their parents, their grandparents. Uh, it's a, a very wide demographic. Johns says beyond the fun, social media allow us to cultivate what sociologists call weak social ties. What's a weak social tie? An example is a Facebook friend you went to grade school with and never talked to after that. John says maintaining these weak social ties creates opportunities that were not possible before social media. My daughter uh, recently got a job lead from somebody who's uh, married to my second cousin. Johns says students' Facebook use spikes during final exam periods and it can be a time-wasting tool of procrastination, but it can also help spur a political revolution. 
Facebook and cell phones play important roles in helping protesters organize, which led to the resignation of Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak after more than two weeks of intense protests over corruption and a lack of freedom of speech. The potency of Facebook and other social media is undeniable, but it's still in its infancy. It would take a crystal ball to really know where it's going to go. Uh, trends can, can break very quickly. Uh, it's uh, fairly clear that people have uh, found a great deal of utility in these networks, and particularly as it becomes more commercialized, as more and more businesses, uh, politicians, uh, other, other uh, entities, uh, other than individuals become uh, involved in social networks, I think we're going to see that it's uh, going to continue to grow and expand and evolve. Thank you, Donnie. For many people, social media is still a fairly new concept, or at least one that they're not utilizing to its fullest extent. We have two guests in the studio today who will shed light on the many methods for effectively using this medium. Alan DeCarroll is president of CWS, a full-service web design firm including social media marketing, located in Rochester, Minnesota. And Jay First is the managing editor of the Rochester Post Bulletin. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Glad, Glad to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about this explosion of everyone's talking about social media. It's something that you should do. Why is it that you think that this really has taken off? Well, first and foremost, it's fun, right? I mean, that's, that's why I think most people initially get in involved with social media. Is it's fun. It's interactive. There's games. Uh, all their friends are there, right? So, so uh, it's given people a chance, I think, to connect with a lot of those people that they haven't seen for many, many years. I mean, they're, I've connected with people from high school that I you know, lost touch with. And, and here's another opportunity for people to uh, reconnect with them. Uh, see that they've got married, that they have kids, and that they just went on vacation last month. So I think it's a chance for people to reconnect and, and build those relationships that they might have lost. And Jay, from a news standpoint, it's certainly another way for people to communicate and just gain information. It is, and connection, as Alan was saying, is, is the key. Um, on our website, uh, we have three keywords under postbulletin.com, and of course it's Rochester as well as Austin. Uh, but we say uh, multimedia, breaking news, and connectivity. And that's, uh, that's really the core of what social media is about. It's um, um, bringing your community together and then, then in our case, uh, providing the information. So if the best thing about this is it's fun, it helps you connect with other people, what's maybe the worst thing about social media in your estimation, if you think there is one? say from our perspective it's more work <laughs> <laughs> frankly uh, we've got a lot to do already uh, just with uh, online um, in addition to our print product and the social media is one more thing that reporters and uh, I and photographers and uh, everyone else in our newsroom needs to pay attention to that said it's pretty important to uh, make that bridge to uh, readers and um, uh, that's the only downside so far for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe from a consumer standpoint, uh, privacy is probably a big concern. You've heard a lot about mm -hmm. that, about sure. um, you know what people can and cannot see, and is it okay that people know where I'm at and what I'm doing, and and that I'm gone and my house is vacant and things like that. Right. So there's some of those concerns that I think that are that are out there. But uh, consumers or users of social media do have the ability to to limit some of that and mm -hmm. set up privacy controls. But a lot, there's a lot of education that needs to take place there. I think before they they know how to do that. So right. that's probably a big one, privacy, I would say. So are there some ways that folks are using social media incorrectly or less effectively? Oh, definitely, I think. I mean, there's, uh, I always tell people this. You know, some people jump into social media, especially business people, and they're trying to sell, sell, sell. Okay, that's, that's a big thing some people are noticing. The other thing is those annoying friends that you have that are always posting annoying things about the weather, like you, know, like you mentioned. Um, I tell people that they should think of social media like a big cocktail party. Um, you know, if your boss invites you to a cocktail party where you may not know a lot of people, you know, you walk in with your spouse and, and you don't really know a lot of people. So what do you do, right? You, you mingle the room a little bit, you see what other people are talking about, you comment on things, you compliment people, you try to inter interject interesting comments into the, into the discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what you wouldn't do is you wouldn't walk into that cocktail party and start going, hi, I'm Malin Carroll. I sell websites. Would you like to buy one today? <laughs> you, know, you wouldn't run around the room and do that because sure. it'd be annoying, right? right? So why do we do that in social media? Why are we so, you know, annoying like that? Mm -hmm. And if we do a good job at a cocktail party, you know, meeting people, eventually, you know, they might invite us back again next week or next mm -hmm. month. You know, the boss invites us back and now maybe it's a smaller group and there's just, uh, you know, there's only six couples there instead of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
And now, uh, you know, maybe maybe the guys go out onto the board, uh, onto the deck, and you know they're grilling, and the girls are in talking about stuff. And that might be the point where somebody says, "Hey, you know, so Al, what do you do?" And that's then the appropriate time to say, "Hey, well, I sell websites and I do this." So, okay. um, but you've been asked that, so mm -hmm. you know, somebody's asking you. You're not forcing your opinion on somebody else. You're looking else. to pique their curiosity. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So that's how I like to tell people to think about it. And that's where every social medium is different. You know, Facebook. In our case, we feel like we can post two or three things, four things to our Facebook page, our post bulletin Facebook page uh, each day, and that's probably enough and beyond that point people get annoyed but Twitter frankly you can go all day especially if you've got an interesting theme we live Twitter basketball games uh, okay. and so on so every medium is uh, somewhat different in that way yeah but I think it's a, the, the real important thing is they really need to understand it's more not just about what you're posting but the comments I think that you give on other people you know right. interact Actually engage them. yeah engage other people and, and be interested in what other people are saying more than just saying stuff yourself mm -hmm. And some folks have really um, been aggressive about the use of this. I shouldn't say aggressive, but they really have taken advantage of all the tools that are out there, even things like YouTube. And, and social media is about communicating, but it's also about sharing things, including pictures, music, and videos. So in a way, YouTube is part of the social media experience. Let's take a minute to see a YouTube clip that's gone viral because people have been sharing it through social media. So that was really a, rather entertaining. I mean, that, that was purely entertainment. It was humorous. We don't know those babies. We don't know that family that they came from. But that video has been seen by millions of people. So it's really an entertainment piece now, too. Exactly. And, and from a business standpoint, those are the kind of uh, things we try to recreate naturally. And it's really, really hard to have that genuine, unique, funny, and all those characteristics. But co big companies try to do that every day, try to make a video like that that is entertaining, that is humorous, mm -hmm. that will go viral and will attract attention. But uh, yeah, that's just fun, right? That's that's everyday life. Those are kids that, yep. that we all can relate to. That's why we enjoy it so much, I think. All right. That's probably one of the challenges in the news business is to be interesting and entertaining without um, you know, compromising, I guess, or um, dumbing down what we do. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are stories that uh, go viral in our case, uh, they might involve, uh, you know, a politician, uh, mm -hmm. a bizarre local, um, you know, uh, 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 news event of some kind, and um, and that's great. But it's hard for us to do that type of thing and uh, make that go viral. And still. Much of the interest in social media, especially by the business community or media, is converting all those clicks, all those hits, all those views, people reading articles into subscriptions or purchases of product. How easy is that to do, to convert the image that they see with actually a product that is sold or read? Depends who you are and what you have to <laughs> offer. So it depends is the, is the short answer to that. Sure. But, but ultimately, I mean, some companies have had a lot of success with that. Let's take Dell, for example. Okay. Dell is using Twitter. And they have a model of, you know, we, if we have a million followers or two million followers, we throw a special out there. We know that this many people are going to see it because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so this many people are going to see it, this many people actually click on it, and this many people will, will purchase it, and this is how much we're going to make. So they have a very systematic approach to it, and they can, they can relate exactly how much money they'll make every time that they throw that special out there. So in that case, it's very easy to, to determine the value of it, I think, because they see tangible. For other companies, it's about building relationships. You, know, it might, you might not have sales, but maybe you have a service that you offer. And maybe that service is, you know, if you're a, a lawyer or an attorney, you know, it's a, it's a much higher priced item, mm -hmm. um, but it's much more relationship based. Okay. So for those people, it's a little harder to determine exactly what the value of each one of those, those people is with because mm -hmm. it's based on the relationship value, not necessarily the value of a sale. Sure. And we probably fall into the latter category in terms of relationship building, but we're able to track the number of people who come to our website as a result of uh, Facebook coming through Facebook or. Um, uh, other social media, and uh, and we believe that it really does, you know, lead to well, leads to more revenue online, among other things. Um, so it's it's important uh, in both ways for us. You guys have done uh, actually some changing of your policy. One of the arenas that yeah. you engage with people online is through the comments on your articles. Tell us mm -hmm. about that change and why you guys decided to make it. Well, for years we've taken comments from readers online on our stories and. Um, 
they've been, for the most part, unfiltered. People can post what they like and um, uh, have strong opinions. Now, we might uh, limit uh, comments on uh, courts and crime stories, uh, certain types of stories that are sensitive and really don't yield useful comments. Mm -hmm. But uh, over the years, it's been clear that people will you know, take advantage of that. So uh, we've now refined it down to the point where we do preview comments. Um, and we approve 99.9% uh, .9 of them, but the, the occasional stray racist, sexist, uh, defamatory, libelous uh, comment doesn't get posted. And that's bent some people out of shape, uh, a fair, fairly small number of people, I would say, but, um, and our comments really haven't uh, declined in any significant way. There seems to be, in some cases, some pushback from folks. I signed up for Facebook, but everybody was just talking about the same thing, or they were all playing games, or... What do we do to address that, or is it even necessary to deal with what might be the quality of posts on Facebook that don't really add to, as you said, it's fun learning something about some of your friends, reconnecting, or they're all playing some game that fills up your wall. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I think that, uh, I think it, you know, it's so new, we're all still learning, first and foremost. And I think we're all starting to learn what annoys us and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So hopefully when we, when we see those things of games and, you know, the, and we're annoyed by them, we'll realize that if we're doing that too, it probably annoys others. So I think we'll all get better at mm -hmm. social media and what, we, and what we do with it and how we share and what kind of information we provide. And as, as we said at the beginning here, it really does have to be interesting and entertaining to some degree. For instance, this morning I got a call right before I uh, came here uh, from a reader saying, I just had to call, I stopped at a donut shop, uh, on my way in as I do every day and um, uh, the woman behind the counter said I'm retiring today after 48 years and I just needed to tell somebody. So the guy called me, um, I mentioned it to another editor uh, to say you know can we get that much for today in, in print uh, or maybe put it on our restaurant blog and in the meantime I uh, tweeted it and put it on my Facebook saying these are the kind of calls I love from readers without providing enough detail so that uh, local TV you know, might get to that same story before we get to it. Sure. So in any case, it all uh, you know, comes together, for, in our case, in print as well as uh, online and in social media. All right. Well, social media certainly is developing and more applications coming all the time. Thank you, gentlemen, for just shedding some light on the tip of the iceberg. Appreciate you being here. Enjoyed it. All right. Stay tuned for more on The Heart of the Matter. We ask people whether or not they use social media, including using texting on their phones. Do you use any social media? No. No texting. No Facebook. Uh, sure. Uh, like Facebook texting and sending pictures on my iPhone. Ashley, I don't. I do. I use Facebook, blogs. Why do you like it? I actually probably am more in touch than I would be if I wasn't using social media. Texting is just a lot easier versus sitting on the phone um, just to get the message across quickly. Why do you not like it? Because what I can tell from my family members who use it, it creates a lot of drama um, as far as the postings of, of things that are very personal. Why would you spend the time to text message something when you could make the phone call and, and get the message done much quicker? While area residents are split on the value of using social media, Special Agent Jonathan Lohman from the Geek Squad joins us to give us a lesson on the latest gadgets. Agent Lohman, thank you so much for visiting with us today and giving us a little tutorial about some of this equipment. But I want to start kind of at the beginning. As, as more people are getting more familiar with social media and, and using it, other folks have been designing tools for us to use this and to interface. Give us a little history lesson about the evolution of some of these devices. The devices themselves have kind of started out as a vehicle of sorts. It, it's a way for people to have access to the things that they do on their computer that they enjoy doing on their computer such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, different social media networks. Um, and it's evolved into, man I'm carrying four or five different devices around right. at a time. How can I combine that down into one or two devices so that I have access and don't have to have pockets full of stuff. Right, so, right, okay. Yeah. And so the pieces that we have now are multifunctional? Correct. Okay. A lot of folks here, we use the term smartphone. Mm 
-hmm. almost without thinking now, but what does it mean? I mean? What is a smartphone and how is that different from a regular cell phone? A smartphone is essentially a combination of the devices that uh, I had mentioned a little bit before. Uh, a smartphone will take on the capabilities of not just being a cell phone, but it'll also be an MP3 player, a GPS unit. Okay. Um, personal storage as far as taking notes, um, voice recorders. There's so many things that they, they dubbed it a smartphone because it could do so much and the capabilities were pretty much endless. All right. Well, let's get our hands on some of these things and, and select a couple of these to give us a sense of what are some of the tools that people are using now to interface with the social media and to connect with friends in a variety of ways. Okay, so as you were talking about the evolution a little bit, um, we start with the first device, which is uh, essentially an MP3 player. It's called an iPod Touch, and what this does is it has access to Wi-Fi. So I have to be in an area that's producing an internet signal, and if I can get onto that network, I can access the internet, I can access all the applications that I have in my my uh, device itself. Okay. Uh, I can stay up on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, from there, they have basically taken and moved to a device called the smartphone, as we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, instead of having to be in a Wi-Fi area, it actually pulls in internet signal from cell phone towers. From your cell phone. So they use different networks to communicate. Correct. Okay. Correct. So with this, this is a little bit more on the go, and it's actually combining two devices in one again. So okay. it's my MP3 player. It's also my uh, connection to the internet. Uh, it does have cameras built into it. Therefore, okay. now I can take pictures with it on the go. Um, label them as mobile pictures, upload them to the internet, and okay. keep everybody in my family up to date as to where I am. All right, sounds good. From there, uh, we have kind of gone into a new a world of what are called tablets, and tablets have been around for quite a while, and they're just recently becoming more and more popular as people are becoming more and more connected. Okay. Um, and tablet is a little bit larger. Tablet is going to be a little okay. bit larger That's altogether. Nice. Uh, it's about a 10-inch screen. And there's actually three styles of tablets. Uh, there's what's called a slate tablet. That's what you have in your hand here. Okay. Uh, they make what's called a convertible tablet, and that's what m most people are familiar with. That's a laptop where the screen will turn around and actually lay down. Um, okay. It's nice because it gives you the versatility of a laptop and a tablet all in one. Uh, and the third type of tablet is called an e-reader. Uh, an e-reader is more for... I don't necessarily want to be connected to the internet, but I want something where I can go around, I can have basic connection to the internet, and I can also read books wherever I go. Okay. And so things like Kindles that we've heard about, mm -hmm. those are more than just book readers. They are. Okay. They, they do have basic internet functions, so Facebook updates, um, everything is stored on the internet with the Kindle uh, and the Nook and... Um, the Sony e-reader as well, so you can access and say, you know, I'm sitting by the pool right now uh, reading this novel and it's a great sunny day in Florida enjoying my vacation. All right. so. Sounds great. Now some of these devices, you, you mentioned the difference between connecting to a Wi-Fi hotspot in a local cafe yeah. versus carrying your own network with you through your telephone. As you usually use these tools, is there one that is safer than the other? Uh, a lot of times when we talk about all this social networking, there, there start to become questions about etiquette and protocol and Correct. security of personal information. Where do we stand in terms of which is safer to use? As far as the connection standpoint goes, uh, the safest tile of connection is what's going to be called a uh, mobile broadband card. And what that does is it gives you a direct connection between your device and a cell phone tower. So connection to okay. the internet from mm -hmm. that, that point. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between that and being in a cafe that has wireless internet access is once you're on that network with wireless access, other people that are on that network, if they know what they're doing, can access your computer as In well. the cafe. Correct. So you, you log on and it's free and that's a great service, but beware that others can see what you're doing. Correct. Okay. If you have your own device such as this one and you are connected through your cell phone, are you chewing up your minutes? How does that affect your, your plan? And I realize every plan is different, but yep. is there an expense component here that does not take place when you are in a local cafe? 
The benefit of having the, the wireless device is the security portion itself, and, and with that, yes, it is going to have a price point much like a cell phone where you're going to be using data. And a lot okay. of people are not familiar with the term data is specifically. So it's not minutes. It's, it's not data. minutes, correct. Okay. It's going to be a little bit different than just talking on your phone specifically. Tell us a little bit about apps. One of my favorites is, is an application called Grocery List. So what that does is um, anybody in my family can upload to the grocery list, you know, we need milk, or we're, we're out of bread, uh, okay. pick this up. And if I happen to be in a grocery store or something along that lines, mm -hmm. I get an alert on my phone and it says we need milk. Okay. I went in there to purchase something else, but I happen to now know that I don't have to make a second trip and okay. pick up a gallon of milk with it. Great. You mentioned one to me earlier uh, about tracking your kids. Absolutely. Uh, Google is using a program called Latitude, and what Latitude does is it allows you to find the GPS coordinates of other friends, kids, family, devices. Um, it's, it's a very nice program. It, it's been built uh, off of another piece of technology. They actually do have a couple of devices, um, even as small as you know, a thumb drive or those flash drives. Okay, and, and a thumb drive is something like this? Something around that okay. size, yep. yep. Um, and what that allows you to do is for kids, personally I have a, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, and what I can do is take a device like that, put it in their backpack, and then on my device I can set up safe zones. So their school is a safe zone, my house is a safe zone, mm -hmm. and if that device leaves that area, I'm automatically notified on my phone. Okay. What do you see coming down the pike? What's in the future for these devices or the use of these devices in social media? The devices are themselves a vehicle. It's, it's a matter of how you're going to stay connected. Everybody's trying to become thinner, lighter, more portable, but the overall goal is how do we stay connected? Agent Lohman, thank you so much thank for you. sharing this information with us. Absolutely. Social media continues to grow in popularity. Thanks to our guests, we are a little more prepared on how to effectively communicate in this new medium. Join us Thursday, May 19th at 7 p.m. as we learn more about the power of food to heal and to harm. With field reporter Donnie Rolls, I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Good night from the heart of the matter.